everybody for joining us. And uh, we're here to announce today that the five of us here today uh, and eight of us in total, including Senators McCain, Durbin, Graham, Menendez, Rubio, Flake, and Bennett, have come together on a set of bipartisan principles for comprehensive immigration reform legislation that we hope can pass the Senate in overwhelming and bipartisan fashion. We still have a long way to go, but this bipartisan sorry, we still have a long way to go, but this bipartisan blueprint is a major breakthrough. It's our hope that these principles can be turned into legislation by March and have a markup by Chairman Leahy's committee with the goal of passage out of the Senate by late spring or summer. Senator Durbin and I spoke to the President yesterday to update him on this group's progress, and he couldn't be more pleased. He strongly supports this effort. The key to our compromise is to recognize that Americans overwhelmingly oppose illegal immigration and support legal immigration. To this end, our framework contains four basic pillars. First, we create a tough but fair path to citizenship for illegal immigrants currently living in the United States that is contingent upon securing our borders. Second, we reform our legal immigration system to better recognize the importance of characteristics that will help build the American economy and strengthen American families. Third, we create an effective employment verification system that will prevent identity theft and end the hiring of future unauthorized workers. And lastly, we establish an improved process for admitting future workers to serve our nation's workforce needs while simultaneously protecting all workers. Other bipartisan groups of senators have stood in the same spot before, trumpeting similar proposals. But we believe this will be the year Congress finally gets it done. The politics on this issue have been turned upside down. For the first time ever, there's more political risk in opposing immigration reform than in supporting it. We believe we have a window of opportunity to act, but we will only succeed if the effort is bipartisan. By their presence today, my Republican colleagues are making a significant statement about the need to fix our broken immigration system. We Democrats are equally serious. We do not want immigration as a wedge issue. Much rather, we want a bipartisan bill that solves the problem and becomes law. We recognize that in order to pass bipartisan legislation, none of us can get everything we want. That's why our framework says we can address the status of people living here illegally while at the same time securing our borders and creating an immigration enforcement system that ensures we will not again confront another 11 million people coming here illegally. On day one of our bill, the people here without status who are not criminals or security risks will be able to live and work here legally. That'll make it easier for them to learn English and integrate into their communities without fear of deportation. But to prove to the American people that we're seriously, that we are serious about permanently ending illegal immigration to the U.S., we say that we will never put these individuals on a path to citizenship until we have fully secured our borders and combated the pattern of people overstaying their legal immigration visas. We're asking our colleagues in the Senate and the House to join us in this difficult work. It's time to work together to pass legislation. Asking our colleagues in the Senate and the House to join us in this difficult work. It's time to work together to pass legislation that improves our security, grows our economy, and ensures that we will continue to be a nation that lives up to the values of our founders. I'm going to turn it over to Senator McCain in a minute. I want to say he has been the glue in our group. His wisdom, his strength, his courage, his steadfastness, and many other adjectives that I'll skip at the moment have really been inspiring to me and I think to all of us. And I want to just say, you want me to go on? <laughs> and, I, and I want to say that every member of our group, including Senator Graham, who couldn't be here today, Senator McCain has a statement from him, 
have really been terrific in terms of understanding that we have to come to an agreement. We have to meet in the middle. That the mission of getting a bill done to strengthen America is more important than any of us clinging to a specific belief. And so I'm optimistic. I'm truly optimistic, more than I was when we had our first meeting in December, that we can get this done. And I really want to thank every one of the members here. It's been so far, we're only a part of the way done. There are loads of pitfalls, but it's been a great experience so far, and I think one that gives all six of us a great deal of optimism. Senator McCain. I'd like to thank Senator Schumer for his leadership. I'd like to thank uh, the Democratic leader, uh, Dick Durbin. There has not been anyone in America who has fought harder for the so-called dreamers that, and then Dick Durbin has, and uh, he will continue to be have the gratitude of many Americans. My friend Senator Rubio, who obviously is a new but incredibly important voice in this whole issue of immigration reform. Senator Menendez has also played a key role. And of course, Senator Graham, who is uncharacteristically absent from this <laughs> gathering. Uh, as, as Senator Schumer mentioned, it's a first step in what will continue to be difficult but achievable. And I don't think I have to remind anyone, the last major attempt was over six years ago. Now we will again attempt to commit the remaining resources needed to secure the border, modernize and streamline our current immigration system, and create a tough but fair path to citizenship for those here illegally. And I would like to testify again, the security situation along the southwest border is not perfect. There remain several areas, particularly in Arizona, where people's homes are being invaded, where drug smugglers are crossing property every night, and these citizens deserve the same level of security that all of us standing here have. But there's no question there's been a significant reduction in illegal crossings over the past five years. Apprehension of illegal immigrants by the Border Patrol have dropped 70 percent from 2005 to 2012. But their work is not yet complete. Greater focus need to be paid to drug traffickers criminals that cross the border. Arizona continues to be a major smuggling corridor and distribution hub for drug trafficking organizations. To combat this, we need to continue to invest, invest in high technology, UAVs, radar, and other proven surveillance systems that will give the Border Patrol the ability to detect and apprehend illegal entries into the United States. It's achievable and can be completed within the next few years if we commit to it. And the next most important step is ensure we don't re repeat the mistakes of 1986, where we gave amnesty to three million people, promised the border would be secure, and now, of course, we are dealing with 11 million people here illegally. So that has to have increased in fines on employers that knowingly hire illegal workers, um, we have to have an employment verification system that will end the hiring of future unauthorized uh, immigrants. We need to shut off the, uh, the magnet that attracts illegal workers. We will put in place a legal worker program to provide a humane and effective system that allows immigrant workers to enter the country without seeking the aid of human traffickers or drug cartels. Any immigration legislation that passes Congress must establish practical legal channels for workers to enter the United States, whether they're high skill, low skill, or agriculture workers, so we can free up federal officials to focus on those individuals truly intending to do our nature workers, so we can free up federal officials to focus on those individuals truly intending to do our nation harm through drug smuggling, people trafficking, and possibly terrorism. Providing an expedi expedited path to citizenship for dreamers, developing a measurement to determine when the border is truly secure, reforming our future immigration system to better meet the needs of our employers, ensuring an entry-exit system to combat visa overstays, and creating a program that makes certain U.S. agriculture 
has the necessary workers to maintain America's food supply are some of the issues that we've committed to addressing and solving in a bipartisan manner. And finally, we come to the most controversial piece of immigration reform, and that's how to deal with the approximately 11 million people living in the United States outside of legal status. What's going on now is unacceptable. In reality, what's been created is a de facto amnesty. We have been too content for too long to allow individuals to mow our lawn, serve our food, clean our homes, and even watch our children while not affording them any of the benefits that make our country so great. I think everyone agrees that it's not beneficial for our country to have these people here hidden in the shadows. Let's create a system to bring them forward, allow them to settle their debt to society, and fulfill the necessary requirements to become law-abiding citizens of this country. This is consistent with our country's tradition of being a nation of laws and a nation of immigrants. I'd like to read Senator Lindsey Graham's brief statement. He says, I hope the third time is a charm. I've enjoyed working with my Senate colleagues in drafting these principles and believe we are off to a good start. The bipartisan immigration principles represent a real breakthrough on substance, and I hope they will be seen as a breakthrough in forming a political coalition to finally solve our immigration problems. The coalition must also include the President and the House of Representatives. My hope is the immigration reform bill will start in the Senate and receive an overwhelming bipartisan vote. We're a long way from having legislative language, but I do believe 2013 represents us the best chance to pass immigration reform in many years. The time is right and the way forward, while difficult, is being better defined by the day. And with a reasonable amount of political give and take, we will be successful. However, if for some reason we fail in our efforts to pass comprehensive immigration reform, I do believe it will be many years before anyone is willing to try and <clears throat> solve this problem. We should start this new attempt, hopefully, with full understanding of how difficult the tax is. But I finally say again, in the last couple of days, we have been able to event what was called a nuclear option in the United States Senate. A lot of people don't appreciate how important it was for us to get that done. Chuck Schumer and I and others and Dick Durbin were involved in a bipartisan effort to avert that. Thanks to the cooperation of our two leaders, we were able to do that. There is a desire for bipartisanship here in this body. I think we can show the country and the world that we are capable of tackling this issue, this issue, a looming and terrible issue that has to be resolved in a bipartisan basis. And I believe the majority of the American people support such an effort. And I want to thank my colleagues again and the ever congenial Senator Schumer. <laughs> And now we'll have the even more congenial Senator Durbin. I want to thank um, my colleagues. Um, John McCain, thanks. We've been down this road before, but I feel very good about our chances this time. Chuck, thank you for your leadership on this. I'm sure that Marco and Bob and Lindsay and I understand that uh, you've been the force behind us. If he's the glue, you're the force. And it's worked. Uh, we've come to this moment. And here we are facing the issue of immigration. Nothing new in America. This nation of immigrants has been debating the issue of immigration since the first group got off the boat and wanted to know why the second group was coming. That's been our conversation in America from the beginning. But it really is critical to remember that those immigrants whose DNA we carry had something special in their makeup to get up and move to come to this great nation for an opportunity they couldn't find in another place. That's part of who, what we are today. And secondly, it says quite a bit about our nation, about how many people want to come here in this free country with this opportunity for an expanding economy. They want to be here in America. But let's be honest about it. The third point is critically important. Our opportunity for an expanding economy. They want to be here in America. But let's be honest about it. The third point is critically important. Our immigration system is broken. It has been broken for a long time. Sixteen years ago, when I was elected to the Senate, one of the first phone calls I received, and I was so honored, was from Ted Kennedy. And Ted Kennedy called this new senator, and he said, I just wanted to let you know I'm chairman of the Immigration Subcommittee. You're on judiciary. I need you on there. 
We haven't really looked at a serious immigration law for 10 years. We're going to get it done. Well, I signed up to be part of Ted Kennedy's team, but it didn't happen. And time passed, another 16 years, and we still have a broken immigration system with 11 million people living in limbo. Well, this statement of values that we give you today is a good, solid starting point for making certain that we fix the system and that we come up with a long-term approach that is fair. It has the basics, basics we insist on. Strengthen border security with the best technology, using enforcement resources for the most serious security threats. Second, require employers to verify that all their employees are legal and make sure that there's a means of verification that is quick and accurate. Third, illegal immigrants already in the United States will be given their chance to earn their way to citizenship. It won't be easy. It'll take them some time and determination. But were it not for that determination, they wouldn't be here in the first place. Among the requirements, of course, a criminal background check. Make certain that they pay any fines that we establish. Pay their taxes, which is a critical part of this uh, whole comprehensive approach. Give them a chance to earn their way into citizenship, learning English, and the basics about America's history. And basically, for making sure that the amount of illegal immigrants that are a lot, amount of legal immigration that is allowed in the United States is based on the state of our economy. We are going to enshrine in here the principle that when it comes to job openings, Americans get the first grab at it. Americans get the first opportunity, and that's the way it should be. We're going to make certain beyond that, though, that there are opportunities for others, and there are a variety of different ways that we approach it. Let me close by just addressing one issue near and dear that I was happy to have both Chuck and John refer to. It's been 12 years, 12 years since I introduced the DREAM Act. I never gave up because when you meet these young people you just can't give up but there were some disappointing times and some sad times and a lot of tears shed when we were unable to pass the dream act in the past the last time around i met with these young people after the vote failed on the senate floor and i said to them i'm never giving up on you now don't give up on us that's what this is about the dream act is going to be an integral part of comprehensive immigration reform the DREAM Act will give to these young people the chance that they have been dreaming of, begging for, pleading to give an opportunity. Now, these young people have shown an extraordinary amount of courage. They have stepped up and self-identified to the world who they are. And when we finally met them, when we came to know who they were, this issue started moving to a place where, in the last presidential campaign, both candidates for office were asked their position on the DREAM Act. It says a lot about where this issue has brought us. And I think it's been an integral part of bringing us to this moment in time. I look forward to happy news for these dreamers and to fulfilling the dreams of so many families who are look looking forward to a better day in America. Well, thank you. Let me uh, join uh, my colleagues in saying I appreciate the incredible spirit uh, that has uh, been displayed in these negotiations leading to these statement of principles. And from what I clear, uh, clearly uh, sense, after someone who has worked on this for years, both in the House when I was there and in the Senate, uh, I am the most optimistic I have been in quite some time. Uh, and I'm not Pollyannish about that at all. Uh, I recognize there are difficult challenges ahead. But I just get the sense of a spirit and a commitment uh, that is far beyond what I've seen in, in some time. Uh, and the American people support this in poll after poll when you take the elements of our principles they have said uh, this is what we want to see in reform of a broken system uh, and there is a reason for that uh, if I want to secure the nation I cannot secure the nation unless I know who is here to pursue the American dream uh, versus who might be here to do it harm and if I have millions of peoples in the shadows uh, without coming forth and registering with the government I don't know what their ultimate purpose is here uh, so when we talk about the nation's security, reform is necessary for security, as it is for the elements of our principles as it relates to enhancing what we've already done in further border security. When I talk about the nation's economy, uh, reform is critical to the nation's economy. Uh, the reality is, is that uh, talk about the nation's economy, uh, reform is critical to the nation's economy. Uh, the reality is, is that uh, even in a very tight economy, uh, there are all types of industries in our country 
uh, which have used the work of immigrants every day uh, to achieve the economic goals uh, of those industries. If you got up this morning and had fruits uh, for breakfast, it was probably picked by the bent back of an immigrant worker. Uh, if you, in fact, uh, had uh, vegetables uh, for uh, a chicken for a lunch, you probably had it deplucked by the hands, the cut-up hands of an immigrant worker. Uh, if you slept in a hotel or motel of the nation, you probably had your room done uh, by an immigrant worker. Uh, if you are looking at some of the cutting-edge technologies in our country, you probably saw the ability of making America a more prosperous, competitive place in the world by the intellect of an immigrant worker. So in so many dimensions, uh, this is about the economy uh, of our nation as well. And finally, uh, two elements of this that I think are incredibly important within all the principles which I support uh, is the fact that we have seen in other countries in the world where there is no pathway to citizenship that there is instability. The reality is, is that this will be an arduous pathway, but it will be a fair one. Uh, it will be one in which uh, those uh, who have come to this country to achieve the American dream will come forth, will must register with the government or they'll lose their opportunities, uh, will have to go through a criminal background check, will have to pay any previous taxes they did not pay, although many do pay through uh, taxpayer ID numbers or a social security number, but nonetheless, they will have to pay anything they didn't pay before. Uh, they will have to, for the first time in U.S. history, learn English to be able to even become a permanent resident. We require that for U.S. citizenship. We have never required that for permanent residents. It is a higher standard. Uh, so those are some of the elements of a more arduous path, but a real opportunity at the end of the day. And lastly, as someone who is a big advocate of making sure that our economy is strong as a result of the immigration reform, but also that we preserve a core value of our society and our history and immigration law, which is family reunification. And how do we do that in a way that is smart and that promotes legal immigration versus that uh, has families divided for so long and then pressures them to make choices about how do they become reunified? I believe we can take care of all of those issues. Uh, finally, let me just say a word or two in Spanish and then uh, I'll be happy to join and answer questions when it's appropriate. Uh, para mí, eh, yo creo que esto es un momento de gran oportunidad eh, para realizar una reforma integral de nuestro sistema inmigratorio. Eh, aunque he estado envuelto en este tema por eh, casi dos décadas, la realidad es que veo este momento como el momento eh, más eh, propicio eh, para real realizar una reforma inmigratoria. No es que va a ser fácil, no es que no hay dificultades adelante, pero sí creo que el espíritu que hemos visto en los miembros de lo cual están negociando estos principios es eh, un ejemplo del de proceso que vamos a ir adelante uh, cuando realizamos la legislación que pudiera crear esta oportunidad. Creo que es de suma importancia para la nación, para su seguridad, para saber quién está aquí para promover y realizar el sueño americano eh, en contrario de quién quiere hacerle daño. Y eso solamente lo podemos hacer si permitimos a esas personas indocumentadas venir y registrarse con el gobierno. Número dos, es de suma importancia para la economía de la nación porque uh, inmigrantes en este país están aportando al bienestar de la nación si lo permitimos participar plenamente en nuestra sociedad después de pagar su deuda a nuestra sociedad, pues creo que solamente todos los índices, todos los reportes, todos los exámenes y estudios dicen que actualmente agregan a la economía de la nación. Uh, y por último, eh, nuestra comunidad creo que habló con su voto y su voz y mandó un mensaje bien claro que espera de que en la nueva demográfica de este país que vamos a ver una reforma inmigratoria y yo creo que esa voz se escuchó por toda la nación le agradecemos el liderazgo del presidente también que está anunciando sus propios principios mañana yo creo que sus principios van a ser similar a los nuestros esperamos que el esfuerzo en la cámara y partidario también se pueda realizar pero aquí es el momento es el tiempo eh, y es eh, la, el capítulo de esta historia de poder realizar esto. Y lo creo sinceramente que lo vamos a realizar. Bravo. Well, first, let me just say, John, I don't agree with anything you just said about you in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding.
Well, first, let me just say, John, I don't agree with anything you just said about you in Spanish. <laughs> I'm I had more adjectives for you, John, than Chuck has. <laughs> uh, well, th thank you. Uh, <laughs> I am clearly new to this issue in terms of the Senate. Uh, I'm not it, new to it in terms of my life. I live surrounded by immigrants. My neighbors are immigrants. My family's immigrants, married into a family of immigrants. I see immigration every single day. I see the good of immigration. I see how important it is for our future. And as most Americans, I recognize how critical an immigration system that works has been for our heritage as it is for our, history, for our future. By the same token, I see the negative that illegal immigration has been for our country and the problems that it causes. And the reality of it is these are issues that the vast majority of Americans agree with as well. The vast majority of Americans believe that we need to have a legal immigration system that works. And they recognize that what we have now is not a 21st century legal immigration system. And that's why I'm so pleased that the first principle in this effort is one to modernize our legal immigration system so that it reflects the reality and the need of the 21st century. By the same token, we recognize that America is a sovereign country that has a right to have immigration laws and has a right to reform them. And that's why I'm pleased that these principles outline not just the need to enforce our immigration laws, but to do so in the future in a way that ensures that we're never here again with the situation that we face today. But none of this is possible if we don't address the reality that there are 11 million human beings in this country today that are undocumented. That's not something that anyone is happy about. That's not something anyone wanted to see happen. But it is what has happened. And we have an obligation and the need to address the reality of the situation that we face and address it in a way that is fair to the people that are doing it the right way. In essence, the hundreds of people that come to our offices every year whose relatives from all around Latin America and the world are waiting in line to legally come here, we have to be fair to them. We also have to ensure that we don't do anything that encourages people to come here illegally in the future. But by the same token, we are dealing with 11 million human beings. Who are, in, who, are, who are here undocumented, the vast and enormous majority of whom have come here in pursuit of what all of us would recognize as the American dream. And that's what we endeavor to move forward here on. And there, let me just say that on both sides of this issue, there are legitimate points to be raised. There are people that are concerned about how much this is going to cost the American economy. We have to be frank about dealing with those issues. This country owes $16 trillion. By the same token, I think we need to be honest with ourselves about how important immigration is for our economy, for agriculture, for guest workers and, and other laborers, and for those who are already here now that are making contributions towards our future. And I'm, I, I think today is an important first step in what's going to be a significantly, uh, a significantly complicated journey, because the issue of immigration is not a simple one. But I think we have the opportunity to do it right. And if we do, I think we'll do a tremendous service to our country and to its future. And briefly, in, in, in español, quiero decir que primero para mí la migración no es un tema nuevo. Es un tema nuevo políticamente, pero en mi vida lo conozco de primera mano. Mis padres son inmigrantes, mis abuelos fueron inmigrantes, la familia de mi esposa son inmigrantes. Yo vivo rodeado de inmigrantes. Yo día a día veo la realidad de la inmigración en este país, lo positivo y lo negativo de la inmigración ilegal también. Y hay que lidiar con la realidad que existe en este momento, que por una parte no tenemos un sistema de inmigración legal que funciona bien, y hay que modernizar ese sistema. Por otra parte, este país, como todos los países del mundo, tiene un derecho a tener leyes de inmigración y que esas leyes se sigan y se cumplan. Pero hay una realidad, que hay 11 millones de seres humanos que están en este país, en este momento, sin documentos. La enorme mayoría que lo que desean es un mejor futuro para sus hijos. Que vinieron y están aquí por las mismas razones que vinieron nuestros padres y nuestros abuelos. Y hay que buscar la solución a ese problema. Pero hay que buscar una solución que no contribuya a la, a la, a la inmigración ilegal en el futuro, y que no sea injusto a las personas que lo están haciendo correctamente, pero también que es humano y responsable y trata bien a estos seres humanos que se encuentran en este país en este momento. Y estoy muy complacido que hoy tomamos un primer paso y que queda mucho todavía por hacer en un tema que es difícil y complejo, pero creo que esto es un primer, esto es un primer paso que deja mucho, mucha esperanza y mucha promesa. Muchas gracias. gracias. Okay, we're ready for your questions. Senator, some Republicans in the House have already expressed opposition. What do you plan to do to get them on board, and are you willing to change anything you propose? <clears throat> of course, we want to work on a bipartisan basis. We are encouraged that Speaker Boehner has uh, specifically stated that he believes that comprehensive immigration reform is an issue that should be taken up by the House of Representatives and uh, le legislation passed by the President. Uh, we are stand ready. We have finished our work and we have the principles and we've made significant progress. 
while we are doing that, to sitting down with our colleagues in the House, both Republicans and Democrats. We'll be sitting down with the President of the United States while we are doing that, to sitting down with our colleagues in the House, both Republicans and Democrats. We'll be sitting down with the President of the United States so that we can expedite this entire process. Uh, there is opposition in the Senate to comprehensive immigration reform. There is some competition in the House, but I am confident the majority of both houses, led by the President of the United States, who has who made this a major campaign issue, that we will succeed. But um, that we're not going to get everybody on board. Senator, you, you all, to some extent, mentioned the fact that you've been here before. Uh, and in fact, in 2007, Senator Kennedy stood with you, and I think Senator Van York standing with him. And he said, 2007 is the year we must face our broken system, we must strike while the iron is hot. What makes you think, I mean, you've all expressed optimism, why is this year different? I'm going to call on John and then. Well, again, I, I, well, one, as I've stated before, elections. Elections. The Republican Party is losing the support of our Hispanic citizens. And we realize that there are many issues in which we think we are in agreement with our Hispanic citizens. But this is a preeminent issue with those citizens. Also, I think over the years, Republicans in particular, but also Democrats and all of our citizens, have realized the reality of what all of my colleagues just stated. We cannot continue as a nation with 11 million people residing in the shadows. And we have to address the issue. And it has to be done in a bipartisan fashion. And if we do succeed, and I think we will, it will be a testimonial to Ted Kennedy's effort years ago that laid the groundwork for this agreement. You will find that this agreement a very little difference from that of the legislation that was led by Senator Kennedy some years ago. I just say one other thing. The public's attitude has changed in four years. Four years ago they said, fix the border. Now they, they much prefer a comprehensive solution, including uh, a path to citizenship, as well as fixing the border and doing the things we've talked about. And what's interesting is when you look at the polling data, it's Democrats, Independents, and Republicans who agree with that. People in the North, East, South, and West agree with that. So the public is yearning for real change now. And I think that is going to help as well. And of course, what Senator McCain said. Senator McCain, Senator McCain how, uh, let's how go over here, please. Go ahead. That lady right there. Senator, um, the president is set to speak tomorrow on this issue. Why do this today? Why are you going to go a day early? Well, we don't have much time. And we came to an agreement uh, this weekend, and we want to move quickly. Uh, as I mentioned, Senator Durbin and I talked to the president. He was delighted that we had come to an agreement. We're going to be working together very, very closely uh, to try and get something done. Obviously, the Senate has a chance to create a bipartisan coalition because we need both parties to succeed. And that gives us a unique opportunity. But we intend, as Senator McCain said, the White House, the Senate, and the House all to try and be working together on this. It seems to me, at least, that the Senate is the most fortuitous place uh, to move forward first. Sir, Go ahead, Dick. We think this help the President. Let me just add one thing, if I might. The last time I was engaged in an active negotiation on immigration, there was a Senator Barack Obama sitting in the room. As a senator, he was committed to it. He is still committed today. And in fairness, President George W. Bush was outspoken in his support for immigration reform from the beginning. So I, I think we have clear presidential support here. And uh, what we have in our statement last, our conversation last night with the president, he cheered us on. And if anything, he said, there's a sense of urgency. Let's do this. Let's let, not let this uh, fall behind. Let me, let me just echo that one last point. Uh, I was uh, on Friday at the White House with the president with the Congressional Hispanic Caucus, and he made it very clear. Uh, major priority. Uh, for me, he said, to move this forward, and time is of the essence. Well, time is of the essence, and we're moving forward. Yes, ma'am. One of the main differences between this plan and the plan that you introduced on your own. <laughs> well, let's be clear. This is an outline of principles. I mean, the plan is the details of a bill that have to be crafted, and those details are going to involve input from a lot of, first of all, from this group, but ultimately from all the members of the Senate, and if it's to become law, including the House. Uh, the principles, I think, 
are quite frankly uh, very similar, if not the same. It's the reason why I've signed on to this. And it's a pretty straightforward principle. It's a principle that says we have to modernize our legal immigration system. We have to have a real enforcement mechanism to ensure we're never here again in the future. And we have to deal with the people that are here now in a way that's responsible but humane. And this does that. It allows people the access to make the in the future. And we have to deal with the people that are here now in a way that's responsible but humane. And this does that. It allows people the access to make their status at this moment legal if they meet certain benchmarks. And ultimately to have access to the regular opportunity anybody else in the world would have to get a green card. And obviously once you have a green card, you're three to five years away from becoming a citizen. It is not going to be an easy process, but it's certainly going to be a fair one and a humane one and one that speaks to our nation, uh, to our legacy, both as a nation of laws, but also as a nation of immigrants. Yes, ma'am. I do want to give an answer to this. In the principles when we talk about the top legalization for the undocumented, would that be tied, would there be a trigger to uh, certifying that uh, the border is secured or does that go parallel? Well, I mean, I can just tell you that my view of it, and I think it's reflected in the principles, is we clearly want to make sure that the enforcement mechanisms happen. And one of the things we all hear from people is, well, you're going to do the legalization part, but you won't do the enforcement part. And so we think the best way to guarantee that people feel comfortable with that is to put in place the following, an understanding that, in fact, the visa entry and exit system, which is something everyone recognizes needs to be done, and real progress in terms of having, uh, you know, real improvement at the border, are two things that are critical that people need to see certified before we move to the final stage in the process. Not the legalization stage, but the green card process, because I think that answers that question. And we're going to be realistic about that, but we also want to be meaningful about that. Si puedo contestarlo en español. Brevemente, lo que quiero decir es que yo creo que lo que oímos muchas veces de las personas en el país es que enforzar las leyes es importante. Dicen que por una parte vamos a hacer la legalización, pero no se va a enforzar las leyes. Y por eso es importante que se haga ciertas medidas eh, para estar seguro de que va a ocurrir, que la ley sí se va a enforzar, eso no se va a olvidar, pero vamos a seguir adelante al mismo tiempo con el proceso de legalizar a esas personas. Y obviamente el proceso final de que es el acceso a, al green card, como dicen en inglés, eh, va a ser contingente que, se, que realmente se puedan lograr eh, varias cosas en, en enforzar las leyes. Senator McCain, one more. Senator McCain, let, me just, let me just say, it's very important. We have to work with the governors and the organizations and citizens on the border states that are the major victims of the broken borders. And we need to work with the Department of Homeland Security, and we will, in order to assure the American people that never again will we face a problem with a large number of people in this country illegally. In Espanol, vamonos. <laughs> Let me just, just let me add uh, an additional point to what Senator Rubio said, so I think we fully, I think what we envision, of course, is subject to our working out the legislation, is that when this becomes a law, individuals who are undocumented in the country would come forward at that moment, and they would register with the government and have a pending status. Now, that is not permanent residency. They have to earn that over a long period of time, but they would have a pending status. And that pending status would allow us to go to the criminal background checks and allow them at that period of time to come forth out of the shadows and be able to at least uh, be here in a status that would allow them to do certain things. Now, then after that, they're going to have to, we're going to have to have the security elements of the border, and then we will have a process where they'll have to wait at the end of the line, make sure that people who are presently waiting under the existing system to adjust, to get their status here in the United States, which is part of uh, what we envision having to deal with, will then after that, uh, and if they've maintained good uh, citizenship during that pending period of time, we'll be able to move towards permanent residency. But at the very beginning of the process, individuals would be able to come forth. They'd have to register with the government, go through the criminal background check, and assuming they pass that criminal background check, begin a pending status. Yo creo que es importante, eh, eh, es importante simplemente decir que en adición de lo que dijo el senador Rubio, que lo cuarto de acuerdo, que al empezar de esta ley si se logra, las personas que están indocumentadas en este país vienen, se registran con el gobierno y tienen un estatus pendiente mientras que se revisa su expediente para asegurar que no tienen ningún expediente criminal y durante ese proceso 
van a tener un estatus pendiente en el país, pero que le va a poder salir de la oscuridad y poder eh, eh, un proceso donde después de años van a tener la oportunidad, si continúan siendo buenos ciudadanos, de legalizar su estatus. Ok, please. No, please, ma'am, let's... Yes, they would be legal. Here is the important point which Bob made. Immediately, when the bill passes, people who are here living in the shadows would get a, a, a legal right to stay here and work. They would no longer be deported, provided they don't have a criminal record. They would no longer be her right to stay here and work. They would no longer be deported, provided they don't have a criminal record. They would no longer be harassed. They would be working. And then, once the parameters that we still have not set up, but are in the bill about securing the border and dealing with, Marco's been very active in the exit entry of visas, then they would be eligible for green cards. But that, but the ability to stay here and work and stay in America and not be deported or harassed comes virtually immediately. Okay? Okay, Julieta. You want to? Ah, this is a good. Uh, about the conversations you have had with business and labor, and how are you going to deal with this issue? Okay. Now, future flow has been one of the shoals upon which the good ship immigration reform has floundered, and um, we know that. So we have had discussions with both uh, labor the AFL-CIO, the SEIU, and business, Tom Donahue and other business groups. And in fact, while we've been negotiating these principles, they have been sitting down talking to one another. Because it would be best, from our point of view, if business and labor could agree on a future flow uh, proposal, obviously we'd have to agree with it too. But that would be very helpful. And according to both Donahue and Trumpka, they are making really good progress, much better than in 2009 when Lindsay and I tried this, and in 2007 where that was one of the where John and Senator Kennedy worked on it. Okay, we'll take one more question. Yes, go ahead. Hmm? Increasing automation. We're worried about declining wages and a crash economy. And in this context. You guys are talking about importing tens of millions of low-skilled labor, not just in the first year, but in future okay. years, one by well, one. So, if I could ask you, what would you say to working-class Americans who are worried that their wages and their jobs will be lost? We to will tie the future. It's in our principles that we will tie future flow to employment. And if there are jobs of, uh, available for Americans to take, that will be one of the major components of future flow. If there are jobs, please, if there are jobs that there aren't Americans for, uh, then um, obviously it'll be much easier for people to come in. An example, farm workers. Americans, by and large, whether it's in Arizona, New York, New Jersey, Florida, Americans don't do the farm work. And so we need them. You have to please let me finish. Um, and so we need workers like that. But I think we are all united in the view that immigration is good for America and good for employment and good for a growing economy. And to have people who will pay taxes, who will contribute to the economic well-being, is a very good thing, and we aim to get it done. Thank you. Go ahead, John. Just mention one other thing about that. There are thousands of graduates with PhDs, with master's degrees in technology that we want. We want to remain in, and, and work in the United States of America. Great. Thank you.